I'm going to take the position of someone who would argue for a low fat vegan diet. It's not my position. Okay. Um, but I'm going to argue their position for a moment. Isn't there data to suggest that fat damages endothelial function and that the best diet for cardiovascular health, which is the leading cause of death, so we should take it seriously, the best diet is a low-fat diet that promotes endothelial health, not dysfunction, and has been shown in clinical trials to reverse cardiovascular disease. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack there. So we'll take it one at a time. Um, as far as the oil and endothelial function, so where that largely stems from is there was one trial where um, they took participants, they um, measured flow mediated dilation. And how they did that was they essentially put on like a blood pressure cuff, pumped it up, held it there, I think for like five minutes or so. Um, and then they released it and saw how well the arteries dilated. Now the participants were first given oil and it was something like a quarter cup or so of oil. And I believe it was with bread. So it wasn't even just oil alone. Um, so this was a lot of oil with, with some, some carbohydrates as well. And they, uh, measured then the, um, ability of the arteries to dilate, you know, immediately and, and shortly thereafter, after the meal. And it, you know, it, there was some impairment relative to, to not having had that meal. And from that, the conclusion is then, well, it, it's, you know, crippling the arteries is the word that's often used and it's not able to, to open up and allow blood flow. And there are, are a couple kind of problems with that for one. Um, oh, and it was olive oil I'll, I'll mention, uh, but for one, they, were like that postprandial, post meal state, um, having any sort of endothelial function in that state has never actually been shown to translate to higher risk of cardiovascular disease. That's just pure speculation at this point that that would lead to a higher risk of having a, a cardiac event. Second, when we look at the impact of, say, olive oil consumption on fasting um, level or fasting ability of the, the arteries to dilate, so flow mediated dilation in the morning, it actually improves function. So an argument, argument can be made for olive oil actually improving artery function in the case that's actually been shown to protect against cardiovascular disease, which is those kind of baseline fasting levels. What do you think? Ability. Is that the polyphenols? I think it could be. I, I think that makes sense. And I also wonder if replacement matters a bit. Mind you, in that um, study, they did do a, uh, a subgroup analysis based on what was being replaced. And it seemed to be pretty consistent regardless of replacement. Um, it was even similar to omega-3 fats, which is really interesting, uh, which I thought might even be preferable. So, so it could be polyphenols. It, mm. it could be a few things. If you take the acute endothelial cell function following olive oil and then you apply a that. large dose with bread right <laughs> like and might. so you could you could you could come to the same conclusions if you were assessing how exercise also affects endothelial. i was just gonna yeah make that comparison because exercise can trigger inflammation post meal or post workout as well uh, and it can last that way for even two days depending right. on the intensity so that really illustrates if you look at something in isolation yeah so we could Theoretically, we could be very reductionist, zoom right in on exercise. I could get you to go and run, measure inf inflammation or endothelial cell function, show increase in inflammation, reduction in flow-mediated dilation, and without knowing any other information, I could on paper say exercise is going to be bad for cardiovascular health. Yeah, I, I've made that comparison on my Instagram as well a few times just because I, I think it really illustrates the point because I, I don't think there's any debate around the benefits of exercise mm. at this point. So, um, so yeah, it is very reductionist. Okay, and what about the claims of reversing cardiovascular disease? Yeah, so those stem from a couple um, a, a couple places. So there's the lifestyle heart trial. So this was the randomized trial by Dr. Dean Ornish. Um, it's been now, I think three decades since that. So it's been, been around for 1990. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been about that. Um, and, um, so what they did was they took, I think it was 28 participants, um, uh, with coronary artery disease. So you, you, uh, they had angiograms showing, um, coronary artery disease and they then randomized them to an intervention or a control group. So in the intervention group, they were put on a low fat vegetarian diet. Now the vegans always cite this as a vegan diet. It wasn't, they were allowed to have egg whites and they were allowed to have some low fat dairy. 
So it was not strictly vegan. Um, they were also having a, a B12 supplement. They were walking primarily for exercise. Um, they were uh, attending support groups and then smoking cessation was a part of the protocol as well, but only one participant actually smoked at baseline. So I, I don't think smoking had a huge effect one way or another. And then the control group underwent standard care. Um, now they measured, um, uh, they essentially measured the amount of plaque in their arteries at the beginning and then after the trial, and they noted some regression. Now the issue with that is that the type of measurement they used was not gold standard. And for that measurement, there's a certain threshold value of difference you need to see, right? So and you need to see at least a certain amount of a, of a you know, decrease in, in plaque size, so to speak, in order to say that there was some reversal and it didn't meet that threshold. When and you say it's not gold standard, just to be clear, it's not gold standard today or at the time it wasn't gold standard? So definitely not today. Now, this is a little outside my wheelhouse, but I believe some of these limitations were at least known then. Whether or not there were better methods, I'm not sure. But, but some of the limitations were noted at that time. So, so it, it could go either way. I won't say with super, you know, a lot of confidence um, either way on that. But, uh, but basically, uh, it didn't meet that threshold for, for regression. Um, and so it could just be due to margin of error measurement. Another thing that's noted is actually the reference artery. So you have the plaque, you know, the, 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 or sorry, the artery and you have plaque blocking a part of it. Um, and you're kind of looking at how much of the space the plaque is blocking. And what they noted was there is actually a wider space. So it could be the case the artery actually dilated and the plaque stayed the same. Like that's another way to potentially look at it. There are a lot of potential variables there. So it wasn't, oh, sorry, I knocked the, <laughs> the mic. Um, so it wasn't just- Those biceps. Yeah, oh man, that, it's that just- That gold, <laughs> gold, gold workout, workout this, this morning, morning. <laughs> has you pumped up and we're hitting microphones. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so it wasn't a vegan diet, even though it's often cited in favor of a vegan diet. Uh, it wasn't just diet; it was a multifactorial intervention. The um, it didn't meet the you know threshold that it needed to meet to claim that there was you know reversal. Um, and uh, and you know we now have have you know better ways to measure these things. And actually, more recently, the Cordioprev trial, which compared a Mediterranean diet higher in fat versus a low fat diet. Again, not a strictly low fat vegan diet, but but a low fat and pretty healthy diet based on on you know what they were eating. Um, and that found that there was actually some regression in the uh, in the um, Mediterranean diet group that was higher in fat. So, mm -hmm. so unsaturated fats, yeah, unsaturated fat in particular. And so that is, is, you know, another reason to, to push back on the claim that it's like the only diet that's shown, shown the sort of effect. Cause it's not. And they had significantly less events as well in cardio prep. Yeah. And I think that's the big takeaway from, from the Ornish trial as well, is that at the five year follow up, the control group had like two and a half times the events. Yeah. So that, this is a very important <laughs> yeah. point because uh, someone might think you're sort of trashing on that study. No. You're you're more talking about the interpretation yeah. of that. So, so by definition and by the, by the study design, we cannot determine the independent effects of of diet in that study period because there was uh, was it exercise. And yeah, there was a little bit of smoking cessation. Yeah, um, support groups. Support there is, groups. Yeah, also, so there's yeah. a bunch of different things within the intervention that could be affecting the outcomes. So that's the first I think that you're, I'm just kind of feeding back to you what you said, yeah. but that's the first thing that stops you saying a vegan diet reversed it. And then the second is the imaging. But what you're saying is it probably doesn't matter yeah, too who much. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Because that intervention did lead to a reduction, a significant reduction in cardiovascular events. Exactly. And that's what I care about. I don't care if you know, one marker improves if you or improves or even gets worse if you end up having a lower risk of disease. Like that's what I, I care about is do you have a lower risk of having a heart attack and or a stroke or whatever it may be? And if that's the case, then great. That's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. What about the the Dr. Esselstyn study that often gets cited yeah. as well. So that was a case series um, and they had 198, I believe, participants. Um, and this was over time um, who had previously had you know, heart disease and he enrolled them in their program, went on a strictly low fat plant based. This one, I believe, was strictly plant based. Um, some of the participants, uh, I, I can't recall the exact proportions, were on 
uh, cholesterol lowering medication as well. So they weren't just doing the diet. That's something that often gets left out. Um, and they were um, followed for a period of um, up to a few years. I, I can't recall the exact follow up time. Uh, but basically, they found that they had a much lower, the people who stuck with the program long term had a much lower risk of having a um, cardiovascular event than those who fell off the program. Now, there are multiple variables there because, well, for one, this wasn't a randomized controlled trial to begin with. They were all enrolled and, and they were comparing people who stuck with it versus people who didn't stick with it. Now, people who didn't stick with it probably are, aren't as healthy in other factors as well. Maybe they aren't exercising as, not, as much and doing other things as well. Um, and, uh, and, but at the end of the day, yeah, they, they saw a, a much lower risk and, and that's great. It's, it's some evidence. It's not the highest quality evidence. We have better evidence out there, but what often gets cited is there's one angiogram, one image of an artery of a before and after. And you see that, you know, apparently the artery just opened up, right? The, the plaque kind of melted away, so to speak. Um, and if that is the case, I mean, I, I know I, I've heard of other cases from, from cardiologists where this, this sort of thing does happen on occasion and they don't know exactly why. Um, but the other thing is, even if you were to take that image from a slightly different angle, it can appear as though it's a completely new artery, right? So, so it could just depend on the imaging because these are done you know, a year plus apart. Um, so, so that's a possibility. And at the end of the day, it was one individual out of the 198 that this image is from. Um, so I... I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that either. But again, at the end of the day, we know by even better data than that, that it lowers your risk of having a heart attack. So it doesn't matter. We don't need to sell it on this you know, image um, that, that they had in there. We can just sell it on the fact that consistently we see that people eating plant-based diets, whether strictly plant-based or mostly plant-based, have a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. And that's what we should care about. And what would you say to someone who's interested in prevention so primary prevention versus secondary prevention so a number of these trials like the the dina one the uh cordia prev and leon are all secondary prevention so they're looking at how does a diet dietary intervention affect cardiovascular disease in the context of someone having existing cardiovascular disease whereas the the other and i think you've made it clear there what yeah. the evidence sort of shows yeah uh, the other question is what about preventing the disease from occurring in the first place is it the exact same sort of principles the same principles apply um for the, for the most part and we have some evidence um as far as observational research we have quite a bit uh, as far as randomized trials like long-term randomized trials we don't have a ton we have things like the predi med study that found a mediterranean diet whether it's rich in nuts or olive oil could lower risk um, of uh, cardiovascular events um, by quite a bit as well but yeah generally speaking we see that each of these individual components of a healthy diet that i talked about seem to lower risk even in primary prevention uh, and overall dietary patterns mediterranean diet scores healthy plant-based diet index scores which is basically scoring your diet according to how many healthy plants you eat and, and then you get kind of negative points for animal foods and, and the less healthy plant foods um, those with the highest scores versus the lowest have a much lower risk of cardiovascular disease in the first place um, and this is consistent you know amongst all the different dietary patterns of almost all the major uh, cohorts that we have this data on mm, i think it it's another scenario where it's it's it seems like it's difficult for some people to accept that there might be a few different ways of going about this right yeah it could be <laughs>